Hi, as you probably know, um, PEC and Holos Hunter are two of my tools uh, that scan process memory for potentially malicious artifacts. Um, over time, those scanners evolved and also uh, the ways to uh, evade them uh, evolved. Uh, one of the ways to evade them is uh, modification of um, so-called sleeping beacons uh, and modifications of a uh, thread call stack uh, and what uh, slipping beacons are um, are just pieces of shell codes that are um, only active for a very short time um, they they connect to under C2 uh, send them uh, interact with them send them some collected results and then they go to sleep and when they go to sleep uh, they are in encrypted form so uh, a typical memory scan uh, that searches uh, for some shell codes in uh, private memory uh, will not be able uh, to just notice that there is a shell code because it might be encrypted it might be in the uh, memory page that is not set as executable it may even be inaccessible um, so um, there are other ways to detect um, this type of beacons, even when they are encrypted. Um, previously, mm, in um, my other demos, I showed you uh, that we can also scan inaccessible memory with the help of PC even Holos Hunter. We can enforce it. Uh, and we do it by a modificator um, data, by a common line argument data. Um, so we can we can force scanning inaccessible memory. We can also scan for searching for obfuscated memory. And there are various various patterns that are used to find uh, this obfuscated memory. So this is one way, but this is also far from perfect. Um, another way is uh, to uh, check uh, the call stack and try to find uh, some artifacts uh, pointing to um, that shellcode that would be executed would be executed um, when the thread is awakened. But there are also ways to uh, evade this type of detection because um, the call stack can be modified and can be altered in the way uh, that uh, we no longer see the shellcode um, on the call stack. We, we no longer know where, where this um, thread will resume uh, upon the awakening. Um, this thread scan was available with argument threads, still um, the argument is the same, uh, but um, the the way in which those uh, call stack modifications were detected also evolved over time. Uh, although, by this type of uh, call stack scan, we are not always able to find uh, the shell code uh, that it will point to, but at least we can notice some indicators. Uh, that give us hints that the call stack was modified. And once we know that the call stack was modified, uh, there are other ways to pinpoint exactly uh, which shellcode uh, was executed. So um, I will just demonstrate how it works in action. And then I will describe in a bit more details. Um, on this machine, uh, I have uh, already a demo running. It's an ACE loader. Um, and um, for, um, for more information about ACE loader, uh, I recommend you to follow the link um, below the video um, because I don't want to uh, elaborate too much on this tool uh, in this short demo. Uh, but long story short, uh, ACE loader is uh, one type of um, advanced uh, sleeping beacon that obfuscates the call stack and 
um, it was designed especially to evade memory scanners, including PEC. Uh, so I will just show you first, um, and just so that you know, uh, this ACE loader is one of the um, command exe um, processes. So let's try to scan it first uh, with the typical parameter that we use to search for shellcodes in memory. So typically, if we just want to search for any shellcodes in any process, we will use an argument shellc. And it has various options because you can search the shellcodes by various criteria. I will choose just A to find by any criteria. And we will narrow down the search to the process's name command line. Let's try it. We have three processes and unfortunately uh, this shark argument was not able to find anything because uh, as I already mentioned the beacon is executed only for a very very tiny um, amount of time and after the execution it's encrypted. So well, let's see if we can find it by another parameter alfisk with argument A and again nothing and this is probably because uh, the shellcode now is no longer in executable memory. It's either in inaccessible memory or just in readable, writable memory. So we can probably find it by adding a bit more arguments and scanning also um, non-executable pages. So let's try with data tree. And yes, this time it found something. It found those encrypted blocks. It di didn't found our shell codes in a plain text form. Still, knowing that there is a shell code in this particular process, we have now our scope of search narrowed down to this particular process. And we can do yet another thing. and scan this process in a loop. And when we scan this process in a loop, even if the shellcode is in, in its plain form for a very small period of time, we will be able to catch it and then dump it. And I think this is um, the easiest way to grab it. But of course we cannot have an effective detection of this type if if we don't know in which process to search, if we don't know um, where exactly our shellcode can be located, then scanning all the processes this way is just too much. Okay, and process probably died. So this process died in between. So we'll do another thing and implant, do the implant to another process. To another command line process. No, it didn't die. It's just my typo, I guess. Let's try with Unity.
Okay. So you see, it caught this shell coat in this very brief period of time when the shell coat was decrypted, and we can see that indeed it looks looks valid. It looks like maybe there is some PE loaded as well. Maybe not. But looking at the functions is 100% ace loader. So we found the correct thing. But the problem is that this way of searching is so inefficient that, of course, we need to first narrow down our scope of search. And to do so, one way I, I just showed that we can scan for all the obfuscation patterns and uh, we can scan non-accessible or uh, non-executable memory as well. But the problem with this method is when we scan plenty of processes at the same time, um, it will give false positives and it is inevitable because process may have some data block with high entropy which is indistinguishable with some encrypted block of shellcode so this way may work but if we scan many of the processes we need something better so um, just to, to solve this problem we can use the thread scan and search for just we can scan all the processes and the call stacks of those processes and see if there is any call stack that looks suspicious that look like there was something altered in this so let's give it a try and i'm scanning right now all the processes Okay, so two things got detected. Artifact, which I'm sure is malicious because I just created it earlier today and it's an initial um, cobalt strike executable that will further inject this beacon to the command line. So let's see what it shows. First of all, we can begin our analy analysis by opening um, the scan report then we will see what was detected where was detected and in case of some suspicious call stack we will also have uh, like complete call stack dump here in the report okay so we can see that there was a waiting thread found it has the following call stack and from this call stack, we found something that may possibly be a shell code. And indeed, it do look like a shell code by the patterns. So this was in the artifact, uh, which did not use a loader and its stack of education. But let's see now uh, what it detected while searching for a loader uh, and now the process that was scanned here is cmdxm okay it's an old report the new report is this okay cmdxm and it detected several indicators so we detected the call stack anomaly and indicators are listed here so um, it has suspicious return uh, suspicious because of some indicators showing that calls integrity is 
corrupt and um, Kostak also does not look valid it looks looks like it was altered here we have all the calls in only one call um, only one uh, return address was found on the call stack and it it does not look does not look normal uh, so it narrowed down from all the processes just those two and in this case it didn't dump any shell code it just dump a report showing the indicators what is what looks fishy in this thread call stack and now having only those processes in in this case we already have the shell code and in this this case we don't have the shell code but we may try to dump the shell code just by the same way as we did last time maybe without using this so that it will dump into the same directory And we got it. We got it. Now it looks like we got the valid thing. Yes, it has the functions that are typical for a loader so um, I can confirm that it is a loader so yeah this is how the thread uh, call stack uh, scan evolved um, of course there are various methods to obfuscate call stack so just play with it have fun and uh, give me some feedback if you detected your sleeping beacons or not um, and it keeps evolving, so stay tuned. Thank you, bye.